have traveled all over Kenya to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the help they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and build profitable businesses. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice, while also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they shape up their shambas. Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Karu, karu. Oh, oh. Uh, welcome to Shamba Shepa. Uh, Tony, have you heard of the phrase economies of scale? No, never. Economies of scale? What, what is that? Is it, is, it, is it when you weigh something economically but cheaply? Come on, Tony, stop teasing me. I ah, never heard of it. Tony, you know everything. Well, now that you say that, of course, I've been in Shamba Shepa long enough to know that economies of scale is when a farmer has a huge increase in produce to sell, but with small increase in farm inputs. That's it. And thereby increasing profits. Correct. In this series, we are highlighting farming as a business. Exactly. And the farmer we are about to meet is planning on doing that. Well, let's go and meet him. This week we are in Transoya County, outside of Kitale. And we are visiting farmers Monica and Stephen Batia. Stephen is a keen tea farmer and is a chairman at the local tea factory, while Monica also plays a major role around the farm. So, let's go meet them. Ah, Tony and hey, uh, Tony. Hi, Monica. You are here. Yeah. Oh, Hello, Monica. How are you? I'm very fine. Hey. We are so happy to be here. Good. Welcome. Oh, so, Stephen, yeah. I understand you're practicing something very interesting here. Oh, yes. Economies of scale. Yeah, I'm doing it. Tell us about it. Yeah, I want to increase my tree plantation because uh, by doing so, I'll be increasing my profit margin and also I'll be reducing the cost of production. Wow. So, I'll get a lot of money out of it. Quite wow. interesting. It seems like you're going to learn a lot from him. I am looking Absolutely. forward to all that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, Monica. Yes. Do you help uh, Stephen? Yes, I help him. Wow. We are working together. I love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Teamwork. Yes. Yeah. So, show us your shamba. Yes, let's go. All right. Oh, this way? Let's go. Yeah, this way. Monica and Stephen grow cabbages. And I see they're almost ready for harvest. And they have cows. And they are looking good. And of course, tea. Currently, over 15 acres. So, let's see how we can shape up this shamba. Ah, ah. good. Very beautiful shamba. Now, Stephen, yes. Shamba Shape Up is here in your shamba today. And welcome. So, yeah. how can we help you? I want to expand my tea plantation. Mm -hmm. So, I'll need your advice so that I can continue getting a lot of money. Uh -huh. yeah. Using less inputs. Uh, less inputs. Uh -huh. And more income. And more income, yeah. Mm -hmm. We are going to practice what you preach. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Anything else? I also do dairy farming. I want to increase my uh, milk production. And what's your target? I'll be very happy to get 20 liters of milk per cow. Per cow? Yeah, per cow. You can get even more. Okay, thank you. It is possible. You're only going to put to extra work okay. and listen to the advice and the rest is going to work. I'll do like it, stopper. I'll do it. Good. I'll do it. Now, you said you work as a team. Yeah. I'll come to you, Monica. I have some workers here, but they don't have light. They normally use kerosene and it's harmful to their health. And they have some kids. Those kids also do studying in mm -hmm. the evening, mm -hmm. and it's very dangerous to them. Mm, I can see. Also, it's very costly. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you see Shamba Shepa here, know that we've come with experts. We don't walk alone, yeah. Yeah. and we'll make sure that your Shamba is fully shaped up. So, it's time to call our experts and get to work. Yes. Ah, seems like today is going to be a very interesting shape up. Azuri are bringing a home solar lighting system for Monica's farm workers. And Coopers are coming to see how we can help Stephen increase the milk yield from the cows. But first, I'm going to find out why doing a soil test is very important. And we are going to learn how Mavuno Fertilizer can help Stephen expand his tea plantation. Bigger scale? Bigger profits. See, see you later. later. The first step in helping Monica and Steven boost their yield in the tea plantation, as with any other crop, is making sure the soil has all the nutrients the crop needs. The only way you'll know this is by doing a soil test. And here is our first expert, Ian, from Crop Nuts. Getting the soil test results can take up to one week. So, Ian came to the farm last week and sent off the soil sample for analysis to the Crop Nut Lab. 
Oh, we are finally here. Yeah. How, how has the production been? Last year, mm. uh, I, I, was, I was tracking for more than 2,000, 2000 kgs. Mm -hmm. Per month, wow. but this year I am plucking 1,500 kilograms. kilograms. Mm. That's less by about 500. Uh, yeah. So, Ian, yes. what do you think the problem would be? The nutrients we know that required for the plants to grow. Mm -hmm. So we need to know their levels, what is lacking, and also what is in excess, so that we can proceed from there. So when you do a soil test, you are taking the guesswork out of farming. So you are actually buying the correct fertilizer and applying the correct rates to your farm. So you are practically doing something according to the book. So there's no guesswork when it comes to your tea planting. Oh, so those are results? Yeah, these are results. You want to know your results? Yes. Let's find out what your results are. So I made two copies. Uh, you can see that one. Okay. On the front page, it normally has the soil analysis. Yes. And on the second page, it normally has recommendations, All right. things that we advise the farmer to do mm -hmm. after the soil test. So on this analysis page, the first page, mm -hmm. I can just see a lot of green, I can see red, I can see figures. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you could explain to us what they mean. So Monica, on your first page, what you, as you can see, yes, we measured all the nutrients that are normally found in the soil. Mm -hmm. Things like phosphorus, mm -hmm. things like nitrogen. What do these nutrients do in the soil? This is the food to your plants. So if you have no nutrients in your soil, you will not grow any plants there. So these are the things that tea normally requires for it to do what? To grow here. Yeah. So that is what we measured. Then we compared it to our guides so that we can know what is low and what is high. What's the condition of Monica's soil? Monica, your soil is good. Okay. You can see it has very good green. Thank you. Which means the nutrients are up optimum. So green means optimum, good. So green means optimum, good. She's doing something. Good. Mm -hmm. And red? And red means there's some laxity in there. Soil. Soil. And the nitrogen levels were low. Mm -hmm. And I believe for tea farmers, the leaves is something, so valuable. something very valuable. Yes. So, so you need to have the correct amounts of nitrogen in your soil. Mm -hmm. And that's what we saw was lacking in your soil. soil. Yes. So what will I do? So I told you the first page is the results. Yeah. Then the second page is the recommendations. Okay. So if you have a look at the recommendations that you have given you, we say that the, your soil has issues when it comes to nitrogen. So we need to take care of the nitrogen levels. Mm -hmm. So that's why we recommended a balanced fertilizer mm -hmm. with both nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Mm -hmm. But we need a fertilizer with high amounts of what? Nitrogen, mm -hmm. because that was what was lacking in your, in your soil. So we recommended that you use the NPK 2555, mm -hmm. which has 25% of what? Of nitrogen, mm -hmm. and this will be good for your soil. Are you promising, Monica, that if she was, she's to use this fertilizer, mm -hmm. then her soil is going to be balanced? Not only using the fertilizer, mm -hmm. but applying the correct amounts. As you can see, we have also advised you on the amount that you should apply per acre. And we have also advised you the time that you should do the application of the fertilizer. Mm -hmm. So if she applies this fertilizer, the correct amounts, and at the correct time, I promise her, she'll not only be doing 2,000, but 2,500 up to 3,000 ages. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Ian. Yes. Thank you, Monica. Welcome. If you want to get your soil tested, you can either call a crop nuts expert to do the soil test for you, or you can dig the soil samples yourself. Starting at the edge of the field to be tested, take a small amount of soil from at least 30 centimeters below the surface and place in a bucket. Then, walking in a zigzag pattern across the field, Dig and collect a further five or six samples. If the field has already been planted, take the sample from between the plants. Mix the samples thoroughly and place around half a kilo into a crop nuts bag and send together with your name and address to the crop nuts lab for analysis. All the details are on the crop nuts website or text iShamba for further information. You should have the results back in less than a week. Right, time to put crop nuts recommendations into action. To improve their tea harvest, Monica and Steven need a fertilizer with 25 parts nitrogen, 5 parts phosphorus, and 5 parts potassium. So I've asked an expert from Avuno Fertilizers to come and offer a solution. And this is especially important as Monica's husband, Steven, is planning on expanding their tea business. Yes, sir. How are you doing, sir? I'm very fine. And you? <laughs> Good to find you here. Yes. This is our farmer, Stephen. Now, uh, Stephen, tell us, how long have you been growing tea? This tea was planted by my father, oh. and I'm still extending the plantation 
so that I can gain about 10 acres. Why do you want to expand on your tea production? During that time I've been in tea industry, I've seen that uh, when you plant more tea, that's when you shall gain a lot. Because when you have uh, one or two acres, at least you shall not gain the maximum profit. Oh, yeah. so you are saying by planting one acre, you might spend more on one acre, yeah, you shall more than what you are going to get let, from it. Let me give you an example. When you have one acre, you shall use the same same people that you will need to when you are plucking more, more acres. The labor cost will shoot high. Will uh, at least we rise up. Uh -huh. yeah. And what you are practicing is called what? That is uh, economy of scale. Economy, of, economy scale. of scale. Yeah. Now, Genesius, what is economy of scale? Yeah, economy of scale from the farmer point of view is uh, when we want to maximize on the higher returns in terms of profit by lowering the production cost. You, when you are now minimizing the laborers, you are now minimizing the cost of production and the higher the, the returns. As compared to the smaller area where the laborers are high and the returns are low. Achieving economy of scale is an important idea in any business. And it also applies to farming. For example, if you are hiring a laborer for one day, that person might finish working on a 10 acre plot. But if you have only five acres, then the laborer is idle for half a day and you've paid twice as much for the work to be done. So, Ignatius, how can you help a farmer like Stephen here achieve his goals of uh, economy of scales? Mavuno fertilizer helps the farmer to achieve the proper soil requirement in terms of the acidity and also helps the crop to grow fa uh, faster. We have different fertilizer. We have Mavuno maize, we have Mavuno banana, we have Mavuno vegetables, we also have Mavuno coffee. And in this case, Mr. Sivin, we also have Mavuno tea. So you are saying that Mavuno has targeted fertilizer yes. for specific crops? Crop. Yes. So the nutrition of tea is different from the crop nutrition of maize or sorghum or maybe banana. And this one is being made to attain the high yield of each and every crop. Mm. Now for Mavuno tea, we have the NPK of 25, 5, 5, and also we have the micronutrients. Mavuno fertilizer has 11 more micronutrients that are helpful to the soil and also to the crop. Mm -hmm. And thereby making Mr. Steven to achieve the best yields. And that's where we come in with the economy of scale, minimizing the production and maximizing on the output. Mm -hmm. So by using Mavuno for tea, he will not use a lot. He will not use a lot. And no matter how much he spends on it, he can easily recoup the money from the production. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that one will help even the farmer to increase the acreages and also to increase his ambition on, in farming. So, Ignatius, show us how to do it. Yeah, sure, let's do it. Okay. So, when using any fertilizers, it is important to use the correct amount. This way, money is not wasted and the crop gets the maximum benefit. Mavuno fertilizer application rate for tea is 120 kilograms per acre. Apply twice a year when the soil is moist. Usually, this will be March and October. Apply the fertilizer in between rows, not around the stem of the bush, as the roots grow out away from the plant. And that's it! So, we found out why doing a soil test is very important. And why choosing the right fertilizer can help increase your produce. But on this farm, Stephen is the real expert. That's right, and we've asked him to share with us his top tip in farming. Yeah, what I would like to advise my fellow farmers is that when they have opportunity to plant tea, in, especially in areas where the climate is conducive, uh, the income that you get from tea to help you educate your children, to help you in any project that maybe you want, therefore it is a yearly crop, you will get a lot of money. Thank you. Okay, coming up after the break. Breeding cows for improved milk yield. And getting power from the light of the sun. Wow! 
welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We are in Transoya and we are visiting Monica and Steven Batia. We have seen how to test soil and use fertilizers. But we also want to find out about breeding cows and solar power. So, no time to waste. Let's get to work. And here's our next expert, Edwin from Coopers. He's come to discuss breeding using artificial insemination or AI. AI is very useful to a farmer because he can select semen from some of the world's very best bulls. AI can lead to a fourfold increase in the rate of improvement in dairy cattle compared to natural mating. AI can also reduce the transmission of diseases. But for AI to be successful, the farmer must be sure of his main breeding objectives so he can choose a bull that meets these requirements. So first, I want to find out from Stephen what he most wants from his cows. Stephen, yes. you're keeping cows. Yes. Which breed is this? Asha. So your main reason for keeping cows is for milk? Yeah, for milk. I have nine, mm -hmm. but I'm making three. Well, how much milk are you getting from these three? 15 liters in a day. 15 liters in a day divided amongst three cows. Yeah. All right. And you want to improve on these cows? Yeah, absolutely. All right. How would you as coopers help our farmer to get to do this? Uh, Buena Steven, for you to be able to get a, a good looking cow, there are those traits that you need to look out for. And they, they are called linear traits. And those are the traits that can describe a cow. And here with me, I have a CRV bull catalog from Coopers. For you as a farmer, you have to select a bull that is good and right for your cows to be able to get maximum meals. The CRV catalog has a list of over 30 bulls and a description of their primary traits. For example, the bull named Apina Fortune has a chart that shows the bull's various traits. Here, Ada has a strong positive trait, whereas the rear leg set is not as strong. So, to get a good milking cow, what are the main traits a farmer should look out for? The first point is a body depth. A cow that has got big body depth can be able to accommodate a lot of forage and therefore can be able to convert that to milk. Body depth is the height of the cow measured from the underside of the stomach to the top of the back. A second point is a linear trait called four other attachment. If you have a cow with poor other attachment, then the udder will tend to sag. And with that, the udder will tend to lead to infections and that's where you can get mastitis very easily. Mm -hmm. Yes. Look for a cow with good udder attachment. As you can see here, the front of the udder should be like this with strong muscles and not weak and sagging like this. Another trait is um, angularity. We are, we are talking about angularity is the way the ribs appear. Because the difference between a milking cow and a bull is that the, 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 the ribs of a bull tend to face downwards, they are like they are straight. For, but for a milking cow they are curved and in between they have a space which one hand can fit. So that shows a cow that is good for milk production. The ribs of a good milking cow should be curved, not straight, and be around 15 centimeters apart, roughly the width of a fist. And then maybe we have another uh, trait, a linear trait for body condition. That is the amount of fat that is available in the pin bones, the ramp. Because now, if we have a cow with poor body condition, then it will not even be able to sustain you in milk and it may not be able to even sustain itself. Because a cow with poor body condition will probably lead to poor health and even poor fertility. In a cow with good body condition, the hook and pin bones should be easily seen with no cavity around the tail head. There should be not too much fat, but just enough so the bones are round, not angular and poking up like this. We have another trait, we call it chest width, because we want a space between the front legs where it can accommodate the lungs and the heart. Because when the heart can pump a lot of blood, which means the blood can circulate well in the body. And also that shows a cow that can accommodate a lot of forage because the, 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 lung, the lung and the heart can, can, can pump blood very well. So that can sustain a cow for, for good. Chest width should be large to accommodate a healthy heart and healthy lungs. So let's say uh, Stephen has chosen the bull mm -hmm. and the cow has been in calf and, and the, cow, the, the calf arrived and all that. So next time, does he choose the same, same uh, bull? No, I will not probably choose the same bull because by Stephen choosing the same bull, he'll 
come to inbreeding because they are both related. Okay. So for Stephen, that's why we provide him with a catalogue and that it has got a variety of bulls. So it's for him to choose a bull which he will use next time. Mm -hmm. And for, by that, you'll have to keep the records of your bulls so that you'll not be keeping on repeating. Yes. So remember, repeated breeding with the mother and the same bull is okay. But never breed that same bull with the calf. Otherwise, there will be inbreeding and the next generation will not be as strong. Our final job today is to help Monica and Stevens farm workers with their lighting at night. They have small children and they are worried about using candles or kerosene in case they get knocked over and cause a fire. Kerosene is also very smoky which can cause breathing problems. And the light produced is dull, which can damage eyesight. Kerosene is expensive too. So I'm glad to see our expert Ishmael from Missouri is already here talking with Monica and the farmers. Let's hear what he has to say. Well, I'm sure the farmers would like to know what is inside that box. Wouldn't you farmers? Yes, yes. we do. You do, yeah? This is Azuri home solar system. This is a quad system. So the first uh, most important is the solar panel. This is a 10 watt solar panel. What this does is uh, it gathers the rays from the sun. So just have a look. Once the rays are gathered on the solar panel, all that is stored in this battery. This is a control unit that stores that power. We call it almost the engine. Pass it around, Brian, yeah, you want to see it. want to have a look? Yes. Just, we have four lights, you can see. Mm -hmm. And then we have one that is double. This is very bright. Many times you can decide to use it out for security mm -hmm. or you can use it in the main room. Mm -hmm. We have two switches. This is one. All the lights are connected. Mm -hmm. All the switches, both the switches are connected. OK, switch on. Ah, is it working? See? How is it? Yes. Mm. You can see it's working, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Is it bright enough? It's mm. bright. Oh. Good. So now, once you have your light, you need to have your phone working 24-7. Uh, it is important for you as a farmer to realize that that is a business tool. It is not just for communication. When your phone goes off and you have to take it to the market for three hours, you lose business. Right? Is that right, Thomas? Mm. So we ensure that with this uh, unit, you always have your phone. And when you're charging your phone, it's close by. So we, this system can allow you to charge different types of phone. Mm. Then you'll put it here. Yeah. It is charging. It's charging. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah. Thomas, happy? <laughs> good, good. And make sure when you stop charging, you put this switch off again. Okay. Yes. okay. okay. Yeah. So now that's done. The farmer has charged his phone. Now he wants to relax. What happens? Yes, that challenge is sorted. We have a radio, a beautiful radio. Yes. Very wow. powerful. Well, nice. <laughs> have a chat. A nice That's radio. Is it easy? Can we switch it on in here? Yes, we can. Uh, switch it on for us. Switch. Let's see whether there is anything. This is how you switch it on. Okay. Then once you switch it on, you use this to search for, to scan. I am where. So that will scan all the stations that are available here. That's good, that's a good one. The farmers have got the light, they have charged their phones, they're listening to the radio, then there's some noise outside. The cow is starting to moo so loudly. And Thomas wants to go out and check. What can he do? We have a, a very convenient torch. Ah, ah. where is it? I'm not seeing any torch. Are you, you even any know torch? that you have a torch? Very convenient. It, it's, you can have it in your pocket. Wow. And it, this is digital. <laughs> yeah. ah. And it's bright? Very bright at night. Mm -hmm. And you also use this, the battery to charge this. You don't need to buy dry cells again. So all that money consider that saved. So, farmers, let me start with you, Thomas. What do you think of this magic box? Yes. Candles, candles. Okay. Good. And uh, and you, what do you think of the system? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. 
it and save up and begin. Ah, and I'm sure Brian is also happy. Yeah. Okay, good. So now one last bit. We have to install it and then we can enjoy the benefits of this Azuri system, okay? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ishmael. Installation of the Azuri Quad home solar system is undertaken by a team of professional installers and is done absolutely free. There really is nothing to worry about with Azuri, as the product also comes with a two-year warranty. And if there's any problems, then there is a dedicated call center to answer your questions. And once the system is paid for, you have free lighting and a free phone charging and no more costs using the radio or the torch either. Wow, wow, what a shape up. Yeah, lots of work done. A lot of work done. I've been educated how to expand my tea. Also to use the fertilizer, Mavuno fertilizer. I know I shall increase my yields, therefore I shall get a lot of money. So when we come back, we'll find you a changed farmer. A very changed farmer. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. All right. Monica. Yes. How has the ship up been? We have got now Sora. My workers will be very, very grateful and their children will be healthy. Thank you and thank you. Well, Caro, it seems that our work here is done. And we'll see you in, in the, the next Shamba! Shamba.